Platinum-selling producer Mellow X found commercial success co-writing tracks on Beyoncé's Lemonade. We talked to him about the real-world advantages of making music on a phone or tablet, and watch him build a track on his iPad by sampling from Instagram and layering a collection of battery-powered instruments small enough to throw in a backpack. My name is Mallow X. We are in my crib downtown LA. Feel me? Uh, this is where I create. Today we're gonna do some sound design techniques with the iPad and also some production techniques. I'll just like go through a whole process and break down what I'm doing. Yeah. All with the iPad, nothing else. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of producers who use the iPad and who use other, other devices or apps or things besides just like a laptop DAW. Um, but I think with what I do, I just kind of, I kind of implement it in every, in all the other things I do, as well as music production, sound design, um, film scores, I kind of like, I kind of use the iPad as almost like the brain or like the beginning part of the idea and then bring it everywhere else after. I think one advantage is being able to be uh, at like an event or something and be like really drunk and be able to like make an idea real quick. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I can hear some shit and be like, yo, this is hot. And like I'll just sample it and then like the Uber ride home, I'll just like, it's like, a, it's like a Game Boy, you know what I mean? I'm just like, boop, 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 make a sample and then bring it home and like add on top of it. I might add some wireless to her, I might, you know, my girlfriend plays bass, I might have her play some bass. So it all depends, but I just like the freedom of like being able to create anywhere. Um, when I was younger, I used to do that a lot. Like if I heard a DJ play a song that I like, and I was out like underage, like out, I would just like write it down real quick or like, you know, that's before they had like Shazam and shit. So now I could like record everything and just work on it right there. So I think it's cool to take it out of like the studio in that sense. I use a lot of different apps. I use, I have like, I'm an app hoarder. I hoard apps, <laughs> you feel me? So like, I got every, any app that comes out, I download it. I watch the tutorials. I watch, you know, Beat Maker The Squad. There's like a whole bunch of like different YouTubes and things that I watch and follow. But, um, but yeah, I kind of like, I like to just get different tools and use them for different things. I have some apps I use for sampling. I have some apps I use just for synth and vice versa. Some of the tools that I use, uh, is literally like any any anyone that's come out, I probably use it. <laughs> I think uh, Machine has probably the best drums. I, I think they have the best selection of drums. Like if you go and just go into the app and look at all the drum selections that they have, and then you can save it as a machine project and open it like in Ableton. And if you have Machine, it'll just like load up, and you can just keep working. So I kind of like that. I don't have machine, um, but I think the drums are like real good. So I use that a lot for drums. Beatmaker 3 is probably the best, to me, the best well-rounded DAW for iPad um, because you can do everything in it. I mean, you could do everything in Cubasis. There's one called Cubasis as well. It's like Cubase app version. Um, there's the other app called Aurea Pro. Aurea Pro I use for sound design sometimes. That one is more like Pro Tools. And then there's a bunch of little samplers. There's a bunch of keyboards. It's too much. I have a lot. <laughs> if I went through all of like Korg got Korg got some ill ass uh, keyboards. Moog. There's one. There's like a Moog one I have. There's there's a lot. <laughs> I could keep going, but most of what I do kind of ends up in a in a DAW at some point because of you know pro tools or whatever but for the most part i'll create everything some like sometimes i'll create everything in the ipad and then bounce it out as stems to pro tools sometimes i'll create i'll just load up different apps and just record what i'm doing in pro tools or in ableton 
So then I'm using Ableton as like the sequencer and I'm just recording tracks, next track, record another sound and just build on top. So it kind of all depends. Um, I would say right now it's like 50-50 where I do some things that's only in the app because I have like the duet, um, I could record straight into the app. Uh, I could mix. Sometimes what I work on on the iPad is part of a larger project. So then I have to bring it into that, into like the laptop, but I'm not like editing it or I just have it perfectly how I want it. And I just bring it there just to place it. I think the only thing that the mobile, I guess the mobile side of it needs is, well, maybe just more for iOS is like file management. The thing with a, with a DAW is like, I could put this file on a desktop and just like open it. Like any, anything I go to, I can open it. Sometimes with certain apps, they don't like, you have to go through Dropbox or you have to use audio share with this one. Or you gotta use, you know what I mean? So there's always different things. Um, and then also space. There's only so much space you can have on like a mobile thing where if you're like me, like making a lot of shit every day, every day, every day, every day, you have to transfer some of it to a laptop. But yeah, I think I'm kind of 50-50 with using the iPad to do like a full idea. Cause at the end of the day to record to it, like I can record and do everything, but there's not, I don't have like that much space to like record everything on iPad. Once storage changes, it'll be like, you'll be able to do everything on iPad. But that's probably like two, three years away, maybe. Cause right now I could do, I could do like a whole project, just never touch a laptop. Yeah, and I've done, I've put stuff out like that before too. You know what, let's go to, uh, hmm, who won a Grammy last night? How about that? <laughs> let's see, uh, Kendrick, let's go to Kendrick Lamar. Let's see. Once we find something cool, chop it up. Cool, I like that, okay. Let's copy the link. Um, let's do this, let's record. I'm gonna screen record it. Save it to camera roll. I wanna get the beginning. Save, stop. So now I'm saving this and I'm gonna send it to myself. I'm going to send it to my iPad and I'm gonna open it in audio share. This is what I was saying with apps. So um, I, could, I could upload from Dropbox, but I can't upload from like uh, I like Apple save files, so I have to go through the drop, Dropbox for that. I'm um, in Dropbox. Hey, let's go to Curate. I go my video file. I'm gonna import my video file. It's going to change it into an audio file. And now I have. So now, in here, I usually normalize it real quick and then I kind of chop. I like that. All oh, hell, King. Let's do that. Trim. 
Trim that. Save. All right. You know what? I want to keep a little bit of that in. Let's redo that. Trim. Let's go up here. I'm going to keep some of that. Perfect. Save. Trimmed. Bang. So now I'm opening it up in um, Beatmaker 3. Now we have it in. Let's put the uh, latency down a bit. So now I'm going to chop it up. So all hail king. I like the all hail king. So uh, I'm using Beatmaker 3. Beatmaker 3 is real good for chopping up samples. I think. Um, so it's real easy. You kind of just drag up top here and it automatically just chops it for you. So I could just kind of chop, I kind of just chop by eye, chop the transients real quick. I might see something like that. Boom. And now auto slice. You could, uh, I mean, sorry, save, split to pads. I split it to pads, I pick a choke group, which is one. Um, also, whatever you do to this one pad is gonna do it for everything. So if I want it to be, um, let's say, I want all of them to be legato. I'll just pick legato. And then I save all of them to pads. Boom. Choke group one pattern. Blah. So now I could. Cool. So now I'll make a little. I'll make a little rhythm. Uh, let's put the. Cool, I like that. Two, three, four. Cool. So I just recorded that over here. I'm gonna loop it. I'll switch a tempo. This doesn't tempo sync, but I could change the tempo in here. So I'm gonna change it to 80. There we go. One, two, three, four. So now that should be. I like that sound. I could just keep that moving while I go into other stuff. I have everything mapped in here through the Duet Apogee. So I could just sample everything in here. If I want to record this sound that I just made right here, all I got to do is go here, hit record, and just have it loop and it'll just record. 
So now I have this here. I'll chop it, chop it. Wow, X set out, X set out. Boom, repeat, and then. Right now I'm just building, I'm just adding. What I usually do, I just add OD sounds. I just like go in on the sounds, go in on the sound. Um, save, always remember to save. Save. Now we can add some drums. What I'll do is, I'll save this as a bank. That, I'll call it Kenny Grammy. All right. Save the samples to the bank. And I'll open another bank. And I'll just find that bank I just made. Boom. Open up. Boom. off record on here. This is mute and when I press record because the record is on. P1. That's from the Novation Circuit. This one is sampled from uh, Instagram. Now I'm going to do some sound design. I'm going to do some uh, mixing on the initial sample. Give it a little more grain, a little more. One more attitude. First, what I'll do, I'll mix it a bit. Raise the bass up a bit. Um, 
gonna put a high pass filter just to cut off some lows that I don't want. Um, I like where that's at. Now there's a app that I use more recently called Lo-Fi Dirt that I like. Um, these guys at MSXII Sound Design. I don't know how you say it, I know I'm fucking it up. So with this, is like it just adds some grit. I could go with um, different modes. I like keeping it here sometimes. Then I'll turn this down. Make sure we're not going in the raft. Okay, now let's hear some other sounds. So what I like about Beatmaker 3 is when you use, you can create your own um, chains of effects and macros and all this kind of stuff. But when they make uh, drums and sample banks, you can also, they also have macros that's already attached to it. So like my love kit is a kit that they have. I could go to the macros and then I could add reverb. Um, I like how that sounds. Next sound. Some effects to that. Um, high pass. No, let's put a low pass. Put a low pass. I put a low pass, and then I'll put a high pass. I like to mix a bit as I go, just to make it a little easier for the mixer, so they kind of know exactly how I like. Like, shit. Alright. Now, I could go for audio units. So audio units are basically apps that they have a version of the app, a smaller version that can open within other apps without having to open the full app. <laughs> Sounds like a lot. But if I wanted to go to, let's say, I want to go to another app right now, I'd have to open up and go to that app and then attach, uh, attach them with Audio units, that app will just open up in this app already, so I don't have to go anywhere. With that said, there's an amazing app called um, Replicant that I like to use, Dubstation. Let's go with Dubstation today. that real subtle now I'm gonna set up a little uh, aux situation let's put a reverb on this aux oh. let's make sure it's all wet Cause it's a sand. Now I'm 
Now what we're missing is a bass. Let's do the bass and then we're done with this idea for now. Cause I wanna bend a bit. Alright, let's add the There we go. That's what we need right here. Now I'm gonna go in and add my own little things to it that I think can help it. I'm also gonna put that same uh, lo-fi dirt thing on it. Let's see how it's... I already like that. Turn it down a bit. And now let's perform it. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like and share it and subscribe to the Sound on Sound YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.